Office workers, listen up. The health risks from sitting too much include everything from cancer and diabetes to cardiovascular disease. And an increasing number of studies are finding regular exercise may not be enough to reduce the risks from sedentary behavior. Here with the latest is WSJ Health reporter Sumathi Reddy and Dr. Michael Jensen with the Endocrine Research Unit of the Mayo Clinic. Welcome to both of you. Sumathi, let me start with you. Do these studies essentially find that if we've sat at our desk for six hours straight and then we get up and go to the gym for an hour, it's too late? The damage has already been done? I mean, I guess they're basically showing that, okay, you're going to the gym, great, but that's not, you're still sitting for six to eight hours in the middle of the day. So any of those physiological changes that are going on then, are still going on. And bad things are happening as yes. we're sitting for that long. <laughs> Doctor, can you tell us what happens to our bodies? You specialize in obesity and diabetes. So what happens to our bodies? What are the risks of being too sedentary and what qualifies as being too sedentary? Uh, two things from being too sedentary. One is just your, your overall level of fitness drops. So it makes it harder to do work and burn off fat. And then the second thing is being that sedentary you're you're not burning much fat as you're sitting still it's a very low metabolic rate system and so you're it's easier to accumulate body fat and develop some of the complications of obesity even though you might not actually become seriously obese oh great sounds lovely now sumathi in your piece you cite research that shows there are also dangers to standing too much there are some professions mm -hmm. such as you know waitressing or being a waiter where you are on your feet for several hours at a time this is not great either, right? What are the dangers there? So when you're obviously when you're on your feet for six to eight hours a day, there's various problems. You know, among the main ones are back problems, feet problems, varicose veins, even an artery, a particular type of artery disease. Um, so actually one ergonomics professor I spoke to has come up with this, his own little formula based on research, and he suggests um, the ideal, for an office work at least, the ideal sort of formula is 20 minutes of sitting, eight minutes of standing, two minutes of moving around and stretching, and then repeat. So, doctor, do these recommendations sound like they make sense to you? I mean, obviously you have a job as well. So during your typical day, how often do you aim to get up and walk around? I mean, you have an active job, but for most of us who are, who are at our, our computer terminals all day, how often should we get up, walk around to maintain that muscle and bone density? Well, unfortunately, my job could have morphed into a computer job just like everybody else's. Uh, it's tempting to sit in front of the computer. So we have several stations set up where you can be at the computer and walking, or if you have to just read something and it's on paper, you can walk and read. Almost all of my one-on-one -on -one meetings are done walking. So I would say that I'm able to get at least every other hour spent up and moving about during the day. And for how long are you up and moving about at those intervals? Uh, 30 to 60 minutes. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. so Sumathi, what is the optimal time a day we should aim to be on our feet? At least two hours? Well, actually, there's very few guidelines on this, okay. surprisingly. Um, recently, in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, they came out with some guidelines from a panel of international experts that suggest the, the ultimately four hours would be great, but two hours would be good as well. It's good. So now, between two and four hours. And we, we burn more calories just by standing still than we do by sitting? It's actually not a whole lot more calories. like at half to half to one calorie maybe, which, you no, know. Like it add up throughout the day, four right? Four hours, but that's, <laughs> yeah, so there's some benefit in that sense. That's a little bit, right? Doctor, what do you recommend for people who are trying to lose weight, let's say, you, you, you study obesity, trying to lose weight, but are locked into an office job that requires them to be sedentary for a large amount of the day, what can they do? Uh, if, it, if it's absolutely required they be sedentary, then really what they're gonna have to do is look at before work, on breaks, after work to try to get in that additional physical activity, even if it's not going to a gym, but just working in the walking and moving. Um, most employers these days will let you get up and move around a bit a day because they realize it improves productivity. And happiness. Sumathi, and happiness. <laughs> right? Sumathi, what about fidgeting? Some of us are naturally more fidgety than others. Does that help at all or there, not much? There was an interesting study that was published actually just last week that found that amongst women who self-reported that they fidget a lot, they actually, their mortality was um, not affected, whereas in terms of the people who, sat, who were very sedentary, who fidgeted a lot, their mortality was not affected compared to the woman who did not fidget as much and were also sedentary. All right, so not great, not a big deal if you fidget or not. No, it should be encouraged, difference. actually. I mean, according it's, to this one study. should be encouraged. All right, good. Let's twiddle our thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Thank you so much, Sumathi, for that. And Dr. Jensen, thank you to you as well.